Hi, thanks for the introduction. So uh, my name is Zhi Haojia, and I'm a PhD student working with Matei and Alex. Uh, so today I would like to present some of our recent work on optimizing DN training by using strategies that go beyond data and model parallelism. So parallelizing deep neural network training is a hard problem, and I think uh, previous talks has, has already explained why this is a, such a hard problem. So, uh, most existing approaches have been focusing on using data and model parallelism to distribute your training. So for example, data parallelism is the default choice in most existing frameworks. And also people have introduced uh, manually designed strategies that try to combine data and model parallelism to accelerate some specific uh, deep neural networks. And previous work have also uh, introduced uh, uh, automatic generated strategies. For example, uh, Google have proposed this colloc RL, which uses reinforcement learning to find device placement in model parallelism. So we found that uh, previous work have been focusing on uh, parallelizing using dimension data and model dimensions, but we found exploring additional dimensions that go beyond data and model parallelism can further accelerate your DN training performance. So in our experiments, we show that we can, we can further increase your training throughput by up to 3.3 times by using additional dimensions that go beyond data and model parallelism. So in this paper, uh, work, we proposed a search-based approach to address the problem. So first, we define a new search space uh, to, of potential parallelization strategies. So we call it the SOAP search space. So it, uh, it, it includes all existing approaches as special cases in our search space. And we also consider uh, much more different uh, strategies. And second, we build a cost model and a search algorithm to efficiently explore the, ser the SOAP search space. And by combining these two techniques, we are able to find optimized strategies that outperform existing approaches. So first, I would like to talk about the SOAP search space, so the, uh, which considers the sample, operator, attributes, and parameter dimensions to parallelize training. So the sample dimension considers how to partition your training samples across devices. So this has been widely used by data parallelism. So uh, the bottom figure shows uh, uh, parallelism in the sample dimension for 1D convolution. So the left cube shows computations defined in 1D convolution. So you have different samples. And so the, uh, the second dimension is parameter dimension that indicates uh, different activations involved uh, within a sample. And we also have a pixel dimension that, uh, that represents uh, computations related to different pixels in your 1D convolution. So, <clears throat> Uh, using the sample dimension, you will uh, end up assigning different samples to different GPU devices. So the second dimension we considered is operator, uh, is operator dimension, which try to partition different uh, gene operators across different devices. So the bottom figure shows one example of model parallelism that assign different uh, convolution operators to different GPU devices. And the third dimension we considered in SOAP is the attribute dimension, which try to partition different attributes within a sample to different uh, devices. So you can think of attributes as pixels in your image. So that the, the idea is that if you have a re high resolution image, you can assign different sub image to different devices to parallelize your computation. So the last dimension we considered here is the parameter dimension, which try to partition parameters uh, within an operator on different GPU devices. So as a result, different GPU will end up computing gradients for disjoint subset of parameters. So this, this can help you avoid any parameter sequenization. So in, in SOAP, we also consider hybrid uh, parallelism that uh, use any combination of the SOAP dimension to hybrid your training pr process. So the left two uh, shows two example hybrid parallelism strategies for 1D convolution. And uh, in our design of the SOAP search space, it is guaranteed that different strategies will perform the ex exact same computation. So you can get the same model accuracy regardless of which exact strategy you choose to parallelize training. So this allows us to focus on the runtime performance of your training process. So this uh, table summarizes the uh, SOAP dimensions that has been used by previous work. As you can see that uh, most previous work are trying to, focus, are trying to parallelize training by using a single or two 
uh, dimensions in the SOAP search space. And in this work, we are the first uh, paper that tried to parallelize in all, in, uh, in all SOAP dimensions. And we show that by, uh, by considering a, a larger search space of parallelization strategies, we are able to find better solutions. So to give you a visualization example, so, the, so this uh, figure shows how to parallelize an uh, inception model in data parallelism. So each box shows parallelization for one operator. So the horizontal dimension is the parameter dimension, and the vertical dimension is the sample dimension. And different color shows assignments to different GPU devices. So the top figure shows uh, data parallelism that always use the sample dimension to parallelize training. And the bottom figure shows one example uh, among many others in the SOAP search space. So first, you can use data parallelism for some layers. You can use model parallelism for some other layers. And you can also choose hybrid parallelism for intermediate layers. And in SOAP, we also consider different degree of parallelism. So different operators can have different uh, parallelism degrees. So these are all considered in our SOAP search space. So, so once we have defined a uh, space of parallelization strategies, the next t uh, question is how can you find uh, an optimized solution in this large search space? So we, we build a cost model and a search algorithm to, uh, for this, to uh, uh, complete this task. So uh, we implement our idea in a system we call FlexFlow. So this figure shows an overview of FlexFlow. So we take uh, as inputs two graphs so one is an operator graph that describes the computation in your uh, deep neural network model. And we also take a device topology graph that describes the set of available devices you would like to use for training, and also the interconnections between devices. And two graphs are sent to an execution optimizer, which will try to find an optimized solution in the SOAP search space. So we use, use MCMC Markov chain Monte Carlo search algorithm uh, in, uh, in our execution optimizer. And we build an execution simulator as the cost model. So the MCMC search algorithm will iteratively generate candidate stra uh, strategies that try to parallelize your operator graph on your device topology. So the candidate parallelization strategies are sent to the simulator, which will simulate the, the execution of, the, of this strategy and send the simulated performance back to the search algorithm. So th this feedback will be used for generating future candidates. So once this search procedure is completed, the best found strategy will be sent to a distributed runtime and will be used to parallelize training. <clears throat> so to build a cost model, the main challenge is that measuring distributed execution on real hardware is very slow and expensive. So for example, if you would like to launch and measure a distributed execution, it may take seconds or up to minutes just to measure a single execution. And we also found two uh, interesting observations for uh, DNA training. First is that the performance of DNA operators are act uh, is actually highly predictable. This is because most DNA operators are using dense linear algebra. And our second observation is that DN models, uh, although they have a huge amount of parameters, uh, uh, operators, but only a, a small number of them are distinct operators. So you have a lot of redundant operators. So for example, consider a neural machine translation model which has hundreds of operators. Only four of them are distinct. So based on these observations, we propose an execution simulator. The idea is that we just need to measure each distinct operator once on the actual device you would like to use. And we can use our initial measurements to estimate the performance of different uh, parallelization strategies. So, uh, so uh, this figure shows an example operator graph, which is a very simple uh, recurrent neural network model. And the bottom uh, table shows one example parallelization strategies. So which, uh, in, which de uh, describes how to partition every operator and how to assign the partitioned task to actual devices. So in this example, we decide to partition the first four operators uh, to each to two subtasks by using a parallelism in the sample dimension. And we decide to partition the last two operators to a single task. And uh, by analyzing this parallelization strategy, the execution simulator will build a task graph, which will include 
uh, which will include all computations defined in, uh, in these parallelization strategies. And in this task graph, we can estimate the runtime of, of these tasks by using our initial measurements on the operators. And we can also fill in the data transfer between tasks uh, by analyzing the dependencies in your original operator graph. So each, each edge in the task graph shows data transfer between different uh, devices. And we, and we estimate the data transfer time by assuming that the underlying channel between the two devices can be fully utilized. So this data transfer time is proportional to the, the size of the data being transferred. So, by, uh, so this task graph will allow us to estimate the performance of, the, of an parallelization strategy. And to further uh, uh, accelerate the simulation procedure, we also proposed uh, what we call the delta simulation algorithm. The idea is that you don't have to build the task graph from scratch over and over again. So this is because the uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo search algorithm used the inflex flow. So it tried to propose a new strategy by changing a single operator in the original strategy. So as a result, most part of the task graph do not change from one, uh, from one strategy to the, next, to the next strategy. So our solution is that we can simulate a new strategy by using incremental updates to the original strategy. So for example, uh, this is the uh, simulation we have seen in a previous slides. And if you would like to change how we partition or how we parallelize the third operator. So instead of building a new task graph from scratch, you just need to recompute the, uh, the operators in this gray area. So this can, uh, uh, this can accelerate the simulation procedure. So this figure compares the performance of the delta and full simulation. So we are trying to find an optimized strategy for parallelizing the neural machine translation model on 16 P100 GPUs on, on four nodes. So the x-axis shows the search time and the y-axis shows the best found, the performance of the best found solution. Uh, so you can see that uh, our search algorithm is able, to, is able to gradually find better and better solutions by, by, t uh, by using more search time. And we terminate the search procedure if we cannot find any better solution in half of the search time. So for this example, our delta simulation can, uh, is, is 2.3 times faster than the full simulation algorithms. So uh, in our uh, experiments, we found that the, in general, the delta simulation can reduce the search time by two to seven times. And as a result, by using the delta simulation algorithm, so our search, um, so our end-to-end our -end search procedure only take a few minutes, so which is negligible compared to your training time, that which, may only, which generally take hours or even days. So the, uh, this makes our search very efficient to use. So in order to evaluate the performance of the best found strategy by FlexFlow, so we compare it with existing approaches on two GPU clusters with different generation of GPU and also different connections between, between GPU devices. We also evaluate our uh, implementation on six DN benchmarks, including three, uh, CN, uh, three uh, CNs for image classifications and also three recurrent neural networks for different language tasks. So this figure compares the training throughput of Google's neural machine translation model by using different uh, parallelization strategies. So the x axis shows the different number of uh, machines and the y axis shows the training throughput. And as you can see that uh, FlexFlow is able to find uh, more efficient strategies and which is uh, 1.7 times faster than the best uh, baseline. And we also do the same, same experiments on up to six DNs. And uh, so this table shows the speed up we can achieve. And in general, uh, FlexFlow is able to ac accelerate your training procedure by up to 3.3 times. So one question you may have is uh, why your, the best found strategy found by FlexFlow is faster than baseline? So in order to an answer this question, we also do a case study on on the best uh, discovered strategy for parallelizing uh, Google's new machine translation model on four P100 GPUs. So this figure shows the best found strategy. Again, each ball, each square shows how to parallelize a single operator. And the, uh, the difference between this recurrent neural network and previous CNs is that you can see the green, uh, the green large rectangles. 
So the operators uh, in the uh, different operators in the same green box, so they share parameters. So you also need to synchronize uh, gradients among different operators in the same green, green box. So we try to analyze why this is faster than, than the existing baseline. So and, and here is what we, some insights we have discovered. So first is that for uh, the embedding layers, the uh, embedding layers has, uh, involves ha very heavy communication, but only very light-weighted light co uh, computation. So as a result, FlexFlow decides to assign all operators within the same embedding layer to a single device. The benefit is that you, you no longer have to do any communication because all gradients are computed on a single device. So for the last softmax layer, it has very, involves very heavy communication, but also very heavy computation. So you cannot assign all operators to a single device because that will result in significant workload imbalance. So to solve this, uh, FlexFlow decided to use explore parallelism in the parameter dimension so that you can get balanced workload distribution. And also by exploring the parameter dimension, you, we can also minimize, we can also reduce your data transfer costs. So finally, for the intermediate recurrent uh, LSTM layers, it involves uh, light communication, but a very heavy uh, computation. So as a result, FlexFlow decides to use hybrid parallelism in both, um, in both the sample and operator dimensions to parallelize training. So to uh, conclude, uh, we have presented, uh, so first we have presented FlexFlow, uh, uh, SOAP, the SOAP search space, and we, and we found that by exploring the SOAP search space, can find faster parallelization strategies that outperform existing approaches by up to 3.3 times. And we also implement our idea in a distributed runtime called FlexFlow that can automatically find efficient strategies in the SOAP search space. So this will conclude my talk, and I ha I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Marco Canini from Cast. Thank yep. you. This is very interesting work. So my question is uh, with regard to, uh, say, these case studies, and when you actually analyze the best solutions that you found, my question relates as to whether you have observed particularly homogeneity in the solution that you found or heterogeneity with respect to, uh, say, you know, the various parallelism um, dimensions. And if you have ex observed high levels of homogeneity, then uh, the follow-up question would be whether you know, that came up as a natural observation. Okay, given that characteristics, it actually makes sense to have this solution, or whether you found something particularly surprising? Um, I'm thinking about how should I summarize the, the question. It's, it's, it's a, yeah, that's a very good question. I think the question is, uh, do you find uh, some common pattern in your best found, uh, discovered stress solutions, sense. or they are just special cases for special, uh, for special architectures? And I think, uh, so my uh, observation is that we, uh, so the best found strategy is different on different devices. So, so uh, I think this is because the search algorithm try to do local optimizations that try to make that local subgraph perform better on, on the actual hardware. So, so if you look at the, the entire graph, it is, uh, you, it's hard to extract patterns. And, but, but you can still, from a high level perspective, you can still get some high level insights about the, the solutions of the best found. And we also have some other interesting case study on other networks in the paper, but I don't have time to include them in the talk. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You got it from the other mic. Yeah. Hi, uh, Amir Sadoi from Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering how do you go about building the device topology graph, and uh, does it take into account uh, like host memory and like device memory? All oh, right, so the question is how do you model the, the device topology? So, so we build a device topology by considering the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, de devices you have for training and also the connections between devices. So, uh, so the, in the device uh, topology graph, each node is a device, uh, is, a, is a GPU device in our example, and each edge is a link between different GPU devices. And the, the weights of the link is just the bandwidth of the the channel between devices. Okay, so yes. it's so, not so, constrained on the memory then? No, no, it's not considering, uh, well, you do not consider memory constraints in our, in the SOAP, in our uh, search. 
Hi, uh, okay. Tomar from Google here. Mm -hmm. So it seems like there would is a fairly strong conceptual relationship between attributes and parameters. Did mm -hmm. you find that there's a distinct benefit to including them as two separate dimensions in your search space? Or did you at any point like try out only having okay. three dimensions? Yep, yep. So, so the question is, what's the difference between attributes and parameter dimensions? So, the, so if, you, if you parallelize in the parameter dimension, you don't have to, so that will result in uh, you know, uh, result in partitioned parameters, so you don't have to communicate parameters if you try to parallelize in parameter dimension. But for attributes, you still need to communicate parameters even if you parallelize in the attributes dimension. So that's the difference. So, right. so it's, mm -hmm. right, but um, did you find that there's cases where you would possibly want to have different combinations of attribute and parameter, or did it always end up being like, if you were doing parameter uh, parallelization, right. you would also be doing attribute. Right, right. So, so for, we found that the attributes dimension is very important for convolutional neural networks. The reason is because uh, if, if you partition over the attributes dimension, it will result in better layout for the underlying GPU. So in our paper, we found that if you partition over the attributes dimension, the GPU kernel will be faster than if you use the sample dimension. So that there are, there are some, uh, we, we have some more discussions in the, in the paper to talk about the benefit of the attributes dimension. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, go ahead. Hi, uh, Leon from uh, McKinsey. You okay. said that you typically run MCMC for two to three minutes to sample from your uh, search space, right? Mm -hmm. But do you feel like you'll get extensive coverage in two to three minutes of the entire search space given that amount of time? Or like, uh, do you feel like you've sampled everything within that? Because the search space is quite complex. Given right, right, right. It's quite high dimensional. Do you think that it might benefit from like Hamiltonian Monte Carlo as well? Right, right. Uh, the, that's a very good question. So, what's, uh, so the search space is very large, and why do you choose MCMC, not, not the others? So, so, we think, uh, so we think in terms, uh, our, our idea is that uh, once you have this search space, you need to find some, some specific search algorithm. And MCMC is, the, is the, our choice, but we didn't say that MCMC is the best one. And, and one interesting work is, can you use some, you know, heterogeneous or hierarchical search algorithm to accelerate this search. And this is one of our future work and we are currently working on this direction to find, use some more efficient search algorithm to accelerate the search and hopefully find better solution. Thank you. Zhu uh, Wei from Carnegie Mellon. Hey. Uh, this very interesting work. Uh, so my question is about, uh, because you have many different dimensions partitioning the operator, so this means there are many different ways of paralyzing it. Uh, does this mean that framework developers have to manually provide manual implementation of all those operators corresponding to different parallelization, or is there a way for Flexflow to automate this? So you mean automate the implementation of using different partitioning, like each single operator corresponding to different partitioning dependencies? Oh, right, right, right. So, so in, uh, in our implementation, we use uh, so so the the distributed runtime is built on our previous work called Legion. And so in terms of the actual kernel implementation, we use existing CUDA libraries to implement. And we found that uh, if there, so in, in, in cases, if there is no existing implementation for particular partitioning, we, we also do some, hand, we also hand write, write some several kernels. But in most cases, there are existing kernels available for us to directly use, in, uh, regardless of how you parallelize the, the uh, operator. I see, okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, this is Rudy from Carnegie Mellon. So this is a very interesting work. Um, my question is, like your motivation was the search space in prior art only has like data and parameter. Mm -hmm. Have you considered using your search algorithm on those search space and compare it with the extra search space? How does that improve? That's the first question. And the second yeah. question is, how does accuracy of the cost model affect your search results? Okay, so the first question is, have you tried to run your search algorithm by just considering data and model dimensions? So we, we, we haven't, this is a very interesting experiment to do, but we haven't done it. Yeah, but uh, it's very interesting to try. So the second question, oh, I, of course, sorry. How, how does the cost model of your performance cost model I, I see. affects? So affects how accurate the, is yeah. your cost model? Yeah, so we actually we have a backup slides. Um, so uh, in general, our cost model is very accurate and also preserve, um, yeah, so this is the slide. So, so this compares the simulated and actual um, performance. And as you can see that we are very accurate. And, and we also preserve the ordering. 
So this means the uh, simulator is a very good uh, metric to compare different solutions. Thanks. Okay. Let's go Thank to the you. last question. Hi, Yitzhak Lockerman, Bloomberg LP. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you, when you start doing all this reordering in order to do the parallelization, do you start getting numeric errors start popping up? Or do you get, start getting limitations to saying you're requiring to use float 32 instead of float 16 to, or float 64 in order to prevent the errors? You mean the precision or the? So I mean, it's basically if you're reorganizing and re many operations, are splitting operations and then letting them go indeterminately, do you start getting numerical errors popping up? Oh, right, right. So we, uh, so in, in our training, we, we, we can, we observe the exact same training accuracy, but, but the, you know, numerically, because you reorder some math arithmetic uh, operations, so you may still get some floating difference. So that's true, but, but we have verified that we can achieve the same uh, model accuracy by using our optimal, uh, our optimized strategy. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Let's thank Jihao again. Thank you very thank much. Thank you.